Welcome back to the Vandy Sports Podcast. I'm Joey DeWire, and Vanderbilt has landed what seems to be one of the bigger names remaining in the transfer portal, Michigan State guard. A.J. Hogard has committed to Vanderbilt for his fifth year of eligibility, and I think this is a guy that's really going to help Vanderbilt. You look at, first of all, just the games played. He's played in over 100 career games. He started 83 of them, and he's played in eight NCAA tournament games. That kind of experience in itself helps Vanderbilt, and the overriding theme I get from A.J. Hogard's game is maybe it won't be flashy, maybe it won't be perfect, but I think he's a need filler for a team that needs some versatility and needs a guy like A.J. Hogard. And I think he provides them with a lot of things. He's a good rebounder. He's a good passer, really good passer, top 50 in the country and assists a 34% assist rate as well. So guy who does a lot of things really well. He's going to score it at all three levels. And I don't know that you're going to love the efficiency that he scores with. He shot at 40% from the field this year, but I think he's an improved shooter. And I think the numbers would back that up. You look at his freshman year, 16% shooter on less than an attempt per game. The next year, still less than, less than an attempt per game, 21%. His junior year, 32% on over two attempts per game, and then over two attempts per game his senior year, 34%. So obviously it says something about him that his trajectory has gone up like that. And I think there's a lot of things you can say about AJ Hogard that are good. Uh, we'll talk more about him, but I want to shout out a presenting sponsor for basketball, The Wash House. Thank you, The Wash House, for allowing us to make basketball content like this possible on a transfer by transfer, game by game basis. I think The Wash House is uh, the most underrated piece of Andy Sports, I think. As crazy it is, as it is to say with A.J. Hogard and the pedigree he comes with, the name he comes with, I think he may be one of Vanderbilt's more underrated players when it's all said and done this year. I think Jason Edwards is going to be the flashy guy who scores it a lot, um, but Hogard, I think, does a lot of things that people maybe hadn't even noticed at Michigan State. People who know basketball hadn't really noticed. First of all, you look offensively, I think he does just about everything, and I think he's the secondary scorer that this team needs. They, they have Jason Edwards. He can score. We know that. But I just didn't know that they had a secondary score. And I think Hogard opens up a lot for other guys. I think he unlocks a lot of guys because it takes some of the pressure off them. He's a guy who we know can score at this level. We know what he can do at this level. And I don't know that he's going to be a first or second team all SEC guy, but having a guy who can do so many things well, I think is a huge plus for Vanderbilt. Hogard in 2023, 2024, averaged 10.7 points a game. The year before, averaged, uh, what was it, 12 point. Let's see, the year before that averaged 12.9 points a game. I think he was honor all Big Ten honorable mention that year, but I don't think the scoring is necessarily the thing that you're necessarily gravitating towards, and he's gonna be a valuable scorer for them. He's a guy who can score at all three levels, especially around the rim, 53% uh, shooter around the rim this year, and that was 45% of his field goal attempts. I think he's a guy who, when he gets going downhill, it's really difficult to stop, and he's not a fantastic athlete around the rim, He's really a below the rim finisher first and foremost, but I think he's really physical. He understands angles. He understands what he needs to do around the rim to score. And I think he's proven at a high level. And I think could maybe even in this scheme where it's transition oriented and he's a 52nd percentile transition player, I think he could be a guy that maybe even takes a step as a finisher this year, which is interesting to say about a guy who was a pretty solid finisher at Michigan State at a high level as a fourth year senior. Uh, but this year, maybe could even take a step there. Uh, the mid range, I think it's probably the level that I'm least confident in. I think he has a really nice floater game. Uh, I think he can make shots from the mid-range, but as an off-the-dribble scorer, was pretty inefficient last season. Um, I don't know uh, what exactly the percentile was, but it wasn't great. It's a three-point shooter. I think he's a better spot-up shooter, and that will help him uh, in the three beyond the arc more than it will inside the arc. I think, though, a guy who can score at all three levels like this, who has proven that he can get his own shot, um, that. He doesn't have to command the ball for 20 shots a game to be effective. I think it's really, really good for the staff to have. And just the physicality that he plays with, I think is again, something that's really gonna help them. You look at the rebounding, he's a guy who has a high rebound percentage for a guard, rebounds really well for a 6'4 guy. And I think that's a result of his physicality. I think that helps his defense as well, where he is, I think he's given up 101 points per 100 possessions this season. Again, gradual improvement throughout his career, I think it was, like in the 107 range, then it was 104, then it was 104 again, then it was 101. So gradual improvement from him in a lot of areas. And his senior year was a little bit of a step back from his junior year at Michigan State. But having a guy who seems open to improving in areas that Vanderbilt needs him to improve, again, really going to help. And you saw why the, you saw what the staff thought of him when they brought him to the tailgate on Saturday uh, for the Tennessee game and had all the fans trying to recruit him uh, themselves. The staff is really high on A.J. Hogard from the looks of it. And I don't know that 
they would do that about a guy that they had motor concerns about or anything along those lines. But I think some people did, and that may be a perception around him that we'll have to watch. But I don't know that this staff that has valued attacking and playing so hard uh, would take a chance on a guy like that. And I think A.J. Hogard, a guy who maybe kind of embodies that mentality when he's really going, and you saw when he's really going in the Sweet 16 against Kansas State, 26 points, 25 points, something along those lines. It's a guy who can really go uh, when he needs to go. And I think he'd be a guy who steps up for Vanderbilt when maybe some other guys aren't doing it. But I think it's okay if, uh, for Vanderbilt uh, at times if A.J. Hogard doesn't have to do some things. I mean, you saw in the tournament this year wasn't super effective. Michigan State still won a game in the tournament this year. Uh, he was okay handing it off to Tyson Walker and letting him kind of do his thing. And I think it could be the same way at Vanderbilt. But if they need A.J. Hogard to step up and be a scorer, he can be a scorer. If they need him to be a passer or a facilitator and on the ball guard, uh, he'll do that. Uh, I just think he's so versatile with what he can do offensively for you. And defensively, I think he can do the same thing. I think he can guard both spots in the backcourt. I think he's physical. I think his length is solid and an asset that he's working with. Um, and I think, again, gradual improvement. I think he can move his feet. I think he understands what it takes to be a good defender at this level. And uh, I think he can really be a tone setter for this team if he's engaged. If he's doing things at a high level, I think he could be a tremendous player for this team. And again, not flashy uh, in many senses, not a all SEC first team candidate in the preseason or anything along those lines. But a lot of what made Vanderbilt's backcourt not successful this season was its flashiness. And uh, I think the declaration that they were the best backcourt in the country hurt them, put a target on their back. I think this backcourt uh, at this point, at this stage at least, is underrated. They have a guy who's proven it, A.J. Hogard. They have Jason Edwards, uh, who will probably be its best player. M.J. Collins off the bench, who I think could really take an efficiency step with some of the pressure taken off of him now. And Grant Hoffman, one of the better passers in the country. It's a really solid backcourt. And you have two freshmen there who can create their own shot as well. So I really like what they have in the backcourt. I have some questions about the rest of their roster, but Hogard is not a guy who I think contributes to those questions. I think he does enough things well to where I don't have many questions about what he's gonna bring them this year. And what he's gonna bring them is a good player who does a lot. And that's what this team needs in year one of a rebuild. They need experience, he has that. They need toughness. And I think he's played in a league that really emphasizes toughness. I think they need a guy who can move the ball and work out of the ball screen. He does that and while I think he's a good passer and a guy who has been an effective passer at high levels. I don't know that he's Grant Huffman. I think Huffman's probably a little bit better at kind of leading guys in and reading the floor, but Hogarth, a guy who can really find his bigs. And if that can be a huge thing that unlocks the rest of Vanderbilt's roster as well, Jalen Carey and Kajani Wright, two bigs who I don't think have been unlocked the way that they could be at Vanderbilt. And if AJ Hogarth and Grant Huffman and Jason Edwards can find them, man, they could be so much better off for it. If AJ Hogarth and Jason Edwards can get downhill and kick it out to Tyler Nickel, kick it out to NJ Collins, they will look much better for it as well. So. A guy who just rounds out the product that this team has and I think gives it a real chance because I think a lot of what had hampered these teams in the past was they, they didn't know how to win. AJ Hogarth knows how to win and he knows what it takes to win. He knows what it takes to be a piece on a winning team. He knows what, it's, what it takes to take a step back and let a Tyson Walker work, let a Monty Sissoko work. And Vanderbilt's got a few guys who I think could maybe force him to do that. But AJ Hogarth, a guy who you can really rely on, I think, uh, and maybe what has had some inconsistencies at times, but he is a really, really nice gift for this team. And uh, I think a lot of the perception around him is not reality. I think there's high expectations from Big Ten fan bases, and uh, he was not somebody who benefited greatly from that. I think, again, good player, not a great player, maybe had higher expectations coming into his senior year than he lived up to. But I think it's a fresh start for him uh, and one that's needed for him as well as what's needed for Vanderbilt. And if it's gonna make the tournament in year one, it's gonna to have to have guys like Hogard leading it. And it, I think it's got a lot of leadership on his roster, even if Hogard isn't the primary leader, he might not be their best leader. Um, but I think just seeing what they have as a whole, I feel pretty solid about where they are. I don't know that they're gonna be a tournament team, but finding a, guy, a way to pay a guy like they paid Hogard and to bring in a guy like they brought in Hogard, bring in a guy like Edwards really, really good sign for what they have moving forward and winning a recruiting battle like this uh, is tough to do, but Vanderbilt, I think, showed you what the staff is capable of and showed you what it's capable of 
on the floor this year by Landing Hogard. So big gift for Vanderbilt and uh, one that I think gives me some optimism about where this team can go moving forward. He, he's not going to be a superstar, but he's going to open up a lot for this team. And a team that needed one more piece got it uh, as A.J. Hogard has committed to Vanderbilt and has given it a chance to do some things that I don't think it could have done had it not had a guy like this. So big gift for Vanderbilt. And uh, we'll see where he takes him. I don't know. He's going to be a perfect player. I think he's far from it. Um, and we saw that. He's only, he didn't average more than 12 points a game in his senior year. He didn't take a leap. He actually regressed in his senior year. But I think there's a reason that Vanderbilt wanted him so badly and a reason that Vanderbilt coughed up the money it did to pay A.J. Hogard and will give him the role that they're going to give him. Uh, big gift for Vanderbilt. And uh, we'll see where it goes from here. We'll talk a lot about what this roster looks like. But every individual in, uh, addition I think I like. And Hogard kind of blends into that. And I don't know that he's a guy that I'm going to I think there's some issues with this roster construction with this team, but I don't think he really contributes to that a whole lot. So uh, we'll talk soon, and I'm not not trying to be his propaganda guy, but I really like what they got with him. I really like what they have as a, as a whole, and uh, we'll see how the Kings get worked out this summer. But thank you guys for watching again. God bless, and uh, we'll talk soon. Peace.